All right, let's talk about this Raw show. Monday Night Raw, number 297, also February 1st, 1999. We are three seconds into the show when we get our first reference to a big red retard. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Three seconds into this show. Well, let's just go over this first segment here. They show highlights of Mankind defeating The Rock in the empty arena match to regain the WWF title. This includes the shots where there was a camera mounted on the forklift that Foley hated so much. Didn't know about it until he watched it on TV. Shane's having a meeting with the corporation backstage. He says Vince is in Texas trying to provoke Steve Austin into a fight. We had Kane being called a big red retard. We had Test saying Kane needs a my doll. He's always in a bad mood. And then Terry Reynolds is there and the big boss man calls her a bitch for no reason at all. What a fine start to this show. Yeah. Raw, baby. Corporation hits the ring. Shane says he's got this under control, sends everyone to the back. He explains if Austin leaves a finger on Vince, he'll be fired on the spot. Why don't they just fire him right now? If they can do that. Contract. Hmm. Yeah. Contract. Although I would think that if the contract says if you lay one hand on a guy, and he, you'll be fired. Like, if you go out of your way and explain on national television that you were provoking the man <laughs> in an attempt to get him fired. Sure. Not sure that's going to hold up in court. But I'm no lawyer. So there is a cage hanging above the ring. Shane orders it, orders it lowered and goes in his promo. As the cage lowers, we see X-Pac is sitting on it. Yep. Uh, they cut backstage. DX is brawling with the corporation. Shane now realizes he is trapped in a cage with X-Pac. Well, first he's cutting a promo on X-Pac. Yes. yes. If I get my hands on this guy, I'm going to turn him to dust. And the cage lowers, and there he is. I was just joking, says Shane McMahon. Well, he said that at first. Then he did not back down from this fight. He removed his jacket and was ready to go. X-Pac beat his ass. China runs down, just runs into the cage. Nothing, nothing stopping her. She confronts X-Pac. He refuses to hit her, but she, when he turns around, China low blows him, and they beat him up, and Shane and China leave together. Michael Cole is talking over Shane during Shane's entire promo <laughs> on X-Pac at the end of this yeah. segment. Yep. Yeah. He, Can you just shut up? Like, throughout the show, there would be somebody doing a promo, and if he wasn't talking over them, you could hear him holding his breath and waiting for the moment that guy had to breathe in. <laughs> yes. And then he would say something to get out there. No he dead had to fill air. Zero dead air. They aired the, if you never saw the 1999 WWF Super Bowl commercial, it's really funny. Mm-hmm. It's <clears throat> Rock and Austin and Taker and Mankind and talking about what, how, what family, fun, uh, family friendly entertainment they provide and it's all about putting smiles on faces or whatever and meanwhile throughout Titan Tower there's just chaos and havoc and war. Vince is in Texas with the Stooges. I gotta say something about this. So he's in a Texas bar. He's looking for Steve Austin. Correct. He has the Stooges with him. They're in Texas, so they're dressed as cowboys. Of course. Okay. (laughs) Vince McMahon. Here's the thing. Like, everybody talks about, well, you can have baby faces and heels. There's got to be shades of gray. You've got to have, you know, three-dimensional characters. You've got to have this, all of this bullshit. Vince McMahon is the most one-dimensional character. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Vince is an asshole boss. Yes. He has two stupid friends. They go to Texas. They dress as stupid. (laughs) I know the irony. (laughs) They go to Texas. They're dressed as stupid cowboys. Vince goes right up, and he he says to them, I know how to handle these kinds of people. Mm -hmm. He says. It's so one-dimensional. And he's the best heel character in the history of wrestling. Oh, yeah. Why do people have to overthink this shit? I don't know. He's so awesome. So he points out they look ridiculous in their cowboy costumes. Which they did. Which they did. Which was the point. Oh, yeah. And they go into the bar, just a random bar in Victoria, Texas. Excuse me. Have you seen Stone Cold Steve Austin in here today? And she replied, I reckon not. It's like Aaron looking for Dave in San Jose. Exactly, yes. (laughs) Going in every gym. Vince is appalled someone would actually use the term reckon. Makes fun of her for it. So she takes out a baseball bat and chases them away. These skits were awful. Yeah. But they were funny. (laughs) They were great. (laughs) Billy Gunn versus Val Venus. So. Oh, boy. (laughs) It's Val Venus versus Billy Gunn with Ken Shamrock on commentary. Yes. Why? That sounds like a dumb idea. So, the story here, <laughs> Shamrock hates Billy because Billy mooned his sister, and he hates Val because Val fucked his sister. 
right? Yes. <laughs> That's what happened. Yep. So he's ranting on about how he, he tried to warn, who, by the way, she doesn't have a name yet. She's just his sister. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's ranting on about how he tried to warn her to stay away from She's guys like, like this. She's like the Sandman. <laughs> in, in that way only. Sure. <laughs> she should be wrapped in barbed wire. Uh, I don't think no. so. No. <laughs> no, she should not. So, so uh, yeah. Uh, he's going on about how he tried to tell her not to date guys like this. And- yeah, Ken's gimmick is he's a musclehead older brother who yeah. thinks that he gets to make the decisions for her. Right. Can I'm going to tell her what to do. Can you imagine no. being this guy's friend? I mean, he he won't let you have an opinion, number one. You you take him to an establishment, and he snaps, and you get thrown out. <laughs> you try to reason with him, and it's his way or the highway. This guy is a bad friend. Have we ever mentioned what a terrible commentator Michael Cole is? Oh, every day. Often. Michael Cole turns to Ken Shamrock and said, this is what, this is, I swear to God, this is what he said. Have you considered that your sister's relationship with Val might be consensual? Might be? <laughs> yeah. How creepy I, is this? I'm really hoping it is. Please be. I don't want to watch a show where it's not. Listen, to his credit, Ken Shamrock's acting in this storyline is the most realistic and passionate of his entire career. Sure. Right? Uh, sure. So he's channeling something real? Uh, maybe he had a sister and there was some porn star that yeah. fucked her once and he's just method yeah. acting. Yeah, look that up. I don't know. So Lawler is blatantly trying to antagonize Shamrock saying, you know in that video, Val's hands were all over your sister's body, soaping her up. <laughs> He said, it, this, if He's I were you, about her hands. I, I should have transcribed this entire show word for word. If I were you, he says, I'd be tearing the hair out of his pornographic head. Hmm. So eventually Val is he's kicking. To, Val is beating the shit out of Billy Gunn, which we'll get to in a moment. And he stops to do his hip swivel and Shamrock can take no more. And he hits the ring and he hits Val with a chair for the DQ. Yes. After saying he wouldn't touch him. Yeah. So, let's see. Uh, Billy gets the chair. Billy Val the chair. thinks Billy hit him yes. for the second week in a row. Yes. So Val does not watch the show. No. Val has no friends. No. Sure. Val has no fuck buddies in the area that tell him what happens on this show. He's just a fucking idiot. So Billy gets his ass beat, loses by DQ, gets his ass beat again, and is left laying again. I need to do a project. I need to go back to the to the, like the last. Uh, tag match the Outlaws had since Billy singles push and count how often he is laid out at the end because it's got to be like 90% well Vinny if you recall you've been talking about this Billy Gunn intercontinental title deal Uh okay from the Observer this week yes 1999 the original plan was for Billy Gunn to win the intercontinental title at the Rumble but Gunn has been a problem of late, yes. mm. and it was felt going through with the change under those circumstances would send a bad message about the company condoning his behavior. So instead, he had to get the ankle lock here. He's supposed to be in a three-way on the February 14th show. That was changed as well. But he is still in line for a major singles push. They may be putting the three-way for the Intercontinental title at Mania. Okay. So he's been a dick. We'll just remember all that. Yes. Um, backstage. In the, uh, in the next segment, I learned a few things. First thing, uh, little people are not only property yes. that can be bought and sold, but also children. Yeah. Even uh, though they're full grown. Was this more offensive than yep. Big Red Retard? Yes. Okay. Because, yeah. well, well, here's what happened. Max Mini's backstage. I only know this because they put a graphic saying Max Mini because it was just a short person with no mask. Yeah, he's mm. randomly unmasked. Just in street clothes. They Mankind is talking. Trump Nitro. Mankind is talking to somebody. I don't know who this guy was. His owner. Yeah, apparently. A man kind of says, I will buy this human being from you yes. for the lump sum of $487 in cash. That's right. And uh, I, I, we have a trafficking angle here on uh, yes. on, on Raw. Yes. And so the guy said... Mm-hmm. What was that? I think he said, what, do you want to rent him? And the man kind of was like, yeah. You know. So it wasn't a sale. It was <laughs> it was a it was a rental. <laughs> that is trafficking. Vinny is actually even more appalled that it was a rental <laughs> than some, a sale. I don't know why that's worse, but it feels worse. <laughs> <laughs> At least you, like if, you, if you're buying, yeah, it's, maybe he's just getting him for a while to see if he really likes him, and then he can come back and buy him later. So it's not a forever home. Sure. Okay. So mankind gives the guy four hundred eighty-seven dollars, and he carries Max Mini away. And who knows what happened? We never saw him again. Never seen again. Maybe he made a film with Val. They go to commercial. They come back. Rock's in the phone with Vince. And it's a split screen, so we see both of them. 
Mankind's also a retard now. Th- th- this this whole segment. Yes. Yeah, buying little no, people. He's a big fat retard. Buying right. people, big red <laughs> retards, big fat retards, all in like 20 seconds of TV time. This is, a, this is jarring to watch in 2018. Kevin Kelly interviews Deborah. <laughs> she said, this is not an exact quote, but it's <laughs> No, close. I got the exact quote. Okay. My body means business. Sure. As well as pleasure. <laughs> Worst pickup line so ever. So she if you're a man. is a hooker. Well, she said right. That. Yeah. She also said that Owen Hart and Jeff Jarrett, no one would beat them for the tag titles because she's hot. Yeah. Huh. So uh, New York rise. Speaking of pickup lines, she knew nothing about the salt, Peter. <laughs> speaking of pickup lines. Mark Henry comes out and says, again, for like the fifth time, I'm quoting here, I think me and you should hook up. Yeah. That never works. It didn't work here. No. Jeff Jarrett and Owen Hart came out and beat him up. That was it. Mm-hmm. Mankind is giving investment advice to Kurgan backstage. Kurgan says, I have no money. Mankind gives us some cash. <laughs> it was so have- dumb. So Kurgan's a professional wrestler. In the oddities, <laughs> yes, on national television every, every week, week. he's yeah. got no money. No money. Sure, yeah. wears the same gear every week. That's true. D'Lo comes out with PMS. They tell him that's what they're called. I know. It's still funny though. <laughs> they told him, "We need you to teach another pig a lesson." D'Lo says, "When is this crap going to stop? Haven't I done enough to prove how sorry I am for making you lose your baby?" Jacqueline says. We're not done with you yet. At which point, Jerry Lawler on commentary says, You skank! What was the show? <laughs> it, was, it was a Vince Russo show. Jesus! Vinny. It was written by somebody exactly. who obviously hates women. Clearly! So Terry says, Boss Man called her a bitch. Now D'Lo will make Boss Man his bitch. D'Lo's not happy to hear this. We get D'Lo Brown versus Big Boss Man. It goes two minutes. D'Lo hits the frog splash. PMS distracts the ref. Bossman hits the Bubba Slam. Ref turns around and counts three. PMS high fives. PMS high fives. Bossman continues to beat D'Lo until Henry makes the save. So are Mark, Mark Henry and D'Lo Brown baby faces now? Because they're feuding with the corporation. E- yes. Who are definitely baby faces. I'm pretty sure they're baby faces. They're feuding with Owen Hart and Jeff Jarrett who are heels. Sure. Yeah. China screwed him. She's a heel. Yeah. I believe they're baby faces. I'm pretty sure PMS is is uh, a heel faction. Quite certain they want us to boo them. Sure. No. Pat Patterson's at the bar hitting on women and getting hit in the nuts for his trouble. This was an absolutely hilariously <laughs> awful skit. Yes. <laughs> they're they're hanging around a pool table. It's two women who like they legit just had to have gone to a bar absolutely. and found two women. Absolutely. absolutely. They're not actors, they're not wrestlers. They're fucking horrible. God bless them. And Pat Patterson is trying to pick up these two women. Huh. And so one of them is supposed to low blow him. Yes. And she basically lifts her knee in the air, misses him by six miles. He grabs his nuts. It was so bad. I just <laughs> figured she used the pool cue on him. Yeah, I think that's what happened. No, it's supposed to be a knee. Hmm. Did we mention where he's he's sitting on her and he, like, he turns his back to her to Bisco and says, "I think it's working." Yeah, <laughs> she need him in the nuts. Blue Meanie came out to dance, allegedly as an audition for a TV show about male dancers. That's what they said. He was going to be the Raw Dancers, a la the Nitro Girls. Yes. The Raw Boy, they called him. Right. Goldust came out and kicked him in the balls. That was the segment. Yeah. Tony is mystified. (laughs) Fuck. Backstage. Francois Petit (laughs) is back. I forgot how... He was the biggest star in the 90s. He was all over the place. (laughs) He's adjusting D'Lo's spine after Boston beat him up. Mark Henry is giving him a speech about how, listen, it's not your fault that Terry lost her baby. And Francois Petit stops and says, baby? Okay. And he explains he was examining Terry. The chiropractor says, no, she was never pregnant. <laughs> D'Lo pops up, outraged, and he says, you'd better not kayfabe. You'd better start shooting with me here. Yeah. The doc says Terry was never pregnant. D'Lo was appalled. So this fucker doesn't watch TV either. No. No. D'Lo's been suffering for weeks because of this ruse, and Francois Petit knew nothing about it. No, or didn't care. At least he cared here. Didn't want to tell him. Draws versus Kurgan. Draws demanded the oddities leave the ring. 
The announcers were break, uh, bragging about the Royal Rumble breaking pay-per-view records. I had dirt-level expectations for this match, and it exceeded them. It was better than I thought it would be. Okay. It went, it went two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Draws, hits a broom handle to the throat, and then, as they called it, a football tackle from the top rope. Yeah. Which indicates they don't watch football either. Right. They don't have ropes in football. They don't. Do they have those in the XFL? They might. Probably. That, I was going to say, they might be coming back. So, Draws wins with a shoulder tackle. He continues the beating until Golga and Giant Silver return to make the save. Hey, Aaron, do you watch football? That's right. Are you excited for the XFL? You know, it should be uh, interesting. I did watch it back in... Uh, back in the day? 2001, when that came out. I think so. Man, oh hey, man. some of it was entertaining, but yeah, I that... just remember I watched the first game and it got really boring. And I believe they had to switch to another game because it was a blowout or something. And that was the last time I watched it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everybody watched the first game. I didn't. Well, I know you yeah. didn't. I didn't. You don't like sports. No. We have my favorite st- skit on the show. <laughs> Vince has taken the Stooges out for barbecue. So they're sitting at the table. There's a huge spread of food. Including like a five gallon bowl of baked beans. Thank you. At least. <laughs> this is this enormous. It's massive. There's, there's beans there for 50 people. And Patterson and Briscoe are chowing down. There's barbecue sauce all over their hands and faces. Vince is sitting back. He is, he's, he's salty. He's disgusted. They, they're, they're, they're planning to, to find Steve Austin and pick a fight is failing. So he looks at this food. He can't believe the Stooges are eating this. And he says, what is this? And he says, that's brisket. Vince, you should try some. It's good. Vince takes a bite and he spits it out. What is this? Briscoe <laughs> just, just, just does a 180. Waitress, get over here. This is Mr. Mac Man. He's from Greenwich, Connecticut. He deserves better food than this. So I'm, of course, thinking this is the part where the waitress picks up the five-gallon bowl yes. of baked beans and dumps it over Briscoe's head. Exactly. The waitress picks up a single-serving little paper boat or tray of sure. beans. There's about eight beans in there. And she dumps it only on his cowboy hat. And she walks away. Here's my theory. They planned this whole thing with all the food and the beans and the big finish. And the waiter said, well, who's going to clean up the beans after you guys leave? And they didn't have an answer. And she said, I'm not dumping those beans out. I got to clean them up. And so she dumped the small server instead. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. Why not? That was that. Midian and Viscera and Undertaker versus The Brood. Undertaker was technically in the match, but spent the entire time in his flaming throne on the stage. Yeah, this was uh, 1999. Undertaker had been telling everyone he was going to retire soon. <laughs> his body's all banged up. He doesn't know much longer he can go. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, they're doing this match. Uh, so, it's in reality a three on two handicap match, but the two very clearly outweighed the three when you think about it. Christian. Did he frog elbow here in 1999 when Mark Briscoe was 14 years old? Mm-hmm. And then the Acolytes hit the ring for the DQ. They're beating up the Brood. Taker strolls down. Refs come down to break it up. But the Brood attack the refs, throw them out of the ring, and then lay down and say, come on, guys, give it to us. So the beating yeah. continues. And uh, they, Farouk, Farouk picks up Gangrel and hits a Dominator right onto his head. Oh, my yeah. God. Jesus. Brutal. They put a noose around his neck, and Taker puts his hands on Gang Girl's head, a laying on of hands, and they throw him over the rope and hang him, which I, I guess you can hang a vampire. Sure. And uh, sure. The, the crowd didn't certainly didn't love this. I don't know if it'll work. Uh, no, try. it doesn't work. And you you can hang them. Yeah. The crowd just had zero idea what to make of this. They had no idea I didn't what to do. Yeah. No. The, yeah. the brood were literally the lesser of the two evils here. Well, not anymore. Mankind walks up to Denver backstage and says, I brought you something for your boobs. Yeah. Awkward she, <laughs> she is as baffled as the rest of us are. He says, there's nothing wrong with them. They make me feel tingly. But I'm concerned you will catch a chest cold, which could be fatal in your case. Mm-hmm. And he bought her a sweater. Oh, nice. That's it. Very nice. So Mankind comes out for a promo. He's world champion again. That's right. He won the title at the... And his leather mask, yeah, and his gross, dirty shirt, and his doctor's scrub pants. He and sure didn't sneakers. look like a champion here. No, he's, he looks worse every week. <laughs> Rock comes out, which is ironic because he says, "You know, 
I don't feel all that good right now. I don't look all that good. But the last time I checked the mirror, I looked like the WWF champion. No, he didn't. I was like, wrong! <laughs> he looked like a weird guy. You are mistaken, In sir. a weird outfit with a replica belt. Yes. <laughs> so Rock runs him down, saying, you didn't beat me, you needed a forklift to do it. Rock's lost his voice, still cuts a great promo. This is the one where Cole was waiting for every time he had to inhale so Cole could say something. Yeah. yeah. And what did he have to say? I don't know. The exact know. same goddamn thing that Rock was saying. Like, we weren't listening to the fucking Rock. Yeah. We were waiting to hear what Michael Cole said the Rock had said. Yes. This time, this time, uh, the Rock is, is catching on, and, and some of the people are catching on, because he said, the millions, and like four fans said, millions? Yeah, the dozen mm. responded yeah. at this point. Thousands. So, man, uh, Rock demanded mankind return the $97,000. Wasn't it 100 well, Dude, he spent three last week. I see. I see. Okay, well, Mankind says now it's down to about 72. Mm. <laughs> he says, yes, I told you I would return the cash if you gave me an empty arena match, but I changed my mind. Yes. What a jerk. I are. He said, Rock, you look like a million bucks. You make a million bucks. You were still the biggest horse's ass in wrestling. Rock's up there blatantly trying to stifle a laugh. That was awesome. <laughs> so, let's see. Mankind offers him a rematch. So Rock says, okay, let's do a last man standing match at St. Valentine's, Valentine's Day Massacre. And Mankind, Mankind accepted, and Rock called him retarded again. I figured your retarded ass would say that, says The Rock. Can we get, like, a counter? <laughs> they did a parody of their own Super Bowl commercial, where this time they were saying, we are not family for entertainment. We use sex to sell our product. Everything just yep. reverse. Still funny. <laughs> that was the one that didn't air. No. Vince and the Stooges thought they had Austin trapped. Where? A firing range. <laughs> Their idea <laughs> is to go to Steve Austin at the firing range and pick a fight. <laughs> so Austin says, okay, or Vince says, here's the plan. I'll go pick a fight. Austin will jump me. You guys jump him, and I'll go get the car. Students look at each other. Is that better or worse than that Disco Inferno plan? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Students look at each other. They repeat it. We'll jump Austin and you get the car? And Vince says, yeah. And one of them just says, there's guns in there. At the gun range, yeah. At the gun range. So yep. they go to break and they come back and the nefarious plot unfolds. Vince opens the door and he thinks he sees Austin. But it is some other bald-headed, gun-toting Texan. In an Austin shirt. In an Austin shirt, conveniently. He threatened to shoot Vince, but then was kind enough to tell him what bar Austin was at. Yep. Road Dogg and Al Snow versus the Acolytes in a hardcore tag team match. I have so many questions. These have jumped the shark week two. Why did this happen? Is there a ta hardcore tag team division? No, but they agreed to team up, but, you know, lasted a week. They had a shitty match. They whacked each other in the head with stuff. I like when Al and... Uh, Whichever, I was thinking it was Farouk, but they, they brawled into the parking lot and then total darkness. Yeah. I mean, like, like, like the lens cap was on. They brawled outside and conveniently there was a table in the parking lot against the parking lot. Yeah. Just table outside the parking lot. Sure. The only thing notable in this match was there's a planted fan. Yes. <laughs> who gets a cup of water and he throws it at Bradshaw. Brent Kremen. Which, by the way, who came up with that idea? Hey, get some water and throw it at him. So fucking Bradshaw turns around. I don't know if he just threw the greatest work punch of all time or if he just knocked it. He fucking brutalized this guy. Yeah. Yeah, he did. And yeah. they just move on. I don't, yeah. Bradshaw killed a fan. <laughs> but you know what? There's a match taking place. If I were running a wrestling company, I don't think I'd shoot angles where... Wrestlers attack fans. Sure. Just, well, you know, we had WCW doing that in 1997, and they had like 35 fans hitting the ring that year. <laughs> yes. Ah, <laughs> oh, what a stupid business. All right. So Bradshaw, power, or both acolytes actually, power bomb, Road Dog through a table and pin him. The Druids come out and clear the ring. They chase out Road Dog. They chase at the table, and then Taker comes out, and the Druids are unmasked, and <gasps> it's the Brood. Swerve. It was a swerve. I, I didn't even. I had no memory of this. Like the brood is in the ministry now. 
I yeah. Well, I the only reason I remember it is because spoiler. Uh, at Mania, they're involved in the cell match. The Taker and oh, yeah. Boss I Man, see, but yeah. yeah, nothing yeah. else. Nothing else of note happens. And then one of these is that the one where Undertaker hangs the Boss Man. It is. Oh my yeah. God, <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, so there is one thing I got to note here, which is Road Dog goes outside afterwards. He screams at Al Snow, and uh, Road Dog turns on him, hits him with a chair to the back of the head. Is everyone on the show a total dick, by the way? Now, here's what's notable about this, Vinny. <laughs> this. Aside from Lance Storm and ECW, this was the lightest chair shot in all of the 90s that Road Dog gave Al Snow to the back of the head. Because if your fucking back is turned and someone doesn't know when you're going to hit him, you shouldn't hit him very hard. No. I bring that up because Paige is now retired because someone came up with the stupid fucking idea of let's have a girl come back from neck surgery. And we'll do a spot where she turns her back, and you kick her in the fucking back as hard as you can. And fuck her neck up, and now she has to retire. Not to mention, this was two weeks after the Royal Rumble, where Rocket Man kind of the back of the head with about eight shirts. Yeah. Yeah. My point is, good for the road dog. Yeah. He's not a fucking idiot. Vince found Austin. Finally. Austin's at the bar drinking beer. This is the payoff, by the way. Yeah. And Vince... Tries to pick a fight. I'm right here, you chicken shit. Punch me. Austin just calmly turns, looks at him, calmly turns back and drinks his beer. Eventually is goaded into at least standing up and says, No, I'm not going to hit you. I'm going to wait till it's nice and legal and inside a steel cage. Vince keeps it up, basically repeats everything he's already said. And Austin says, Look, I'm going to leave. I'm not going to hit you. But... All these people you've been talking about when you call me a big dumb Texan and a redneck and these people, these kind of people, all that stuff, I can't guarantee what they're going to do. Y'all have a nice night. Show Mr. McMahon a good time, he says. That's right. And he then did. he leaves. The rednecks all start walking Vince down, and they go to break, and that's it. You know, last week I was talking about how the there were two cage matches in February. There was Vince versus Steve Austin, and there was Flair versus Bischoff. And even though WWE was like 10 times hotter, the Flair Bischoff match did a better buy rate. Right. I got to say, watching both of these shows, like the build to the Eric Bischoff Flair match is fucking way better than this one. Is it Hogan and Flair? Or Hogan and Flair? Yeah. Hogan and Flair in the cage. Yeah. Yeah. That's way better than this build. He went to a bar, <laughs> he called Austin a chicken shit. Austin didn't do anything, and then Rednecks beat up Vince. Yeah. Now, now, why didn't Austin attack the Stooges? I don't know. Maybe that's in his contract. We don't know how much he's been drinking. Ah, yeah. okay. Maybe he thought Patterson would outshine him. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Triple H versus Kane in the most boring cage match of oh all time. Oh, my God. Was You know what the problem is? When you condition fans that every match is three minutes long and 85 <laughs> people run in that's and true. it's all bullshit, when you do a 12-minute match right. full of wrestling, it's fucking boring. And it was Kane. It was Kane. And I don't even know why they were wrestling. Why were these two guys wrestling in a cage? Shane booked them to the opening segment. Uh, Shane booked them. Yeah. Um, Hunter was sure to call China a big bitch in his promo. So Kane beats him up slowly forever. Randomly sets off his pyro. Now they are randomly wrestling in red light. Now they are randomly wrestling in normal lights. It goes on for a long time. To make a long story short. Actually, there was one amazing thing here. Kane's going to climb out. Hunter yanks him back. Kane... Took a flat back bump from the top rope to the mat in this nothing happening cage match. That's huge for a guy like that. So X Pac runs out to help Hunter cheat. He climbs up the cage. He is blocking Kane's exit. China runs out to try to stop Hunter from leaving. She grabs his leg. He kicks her down and he climbs out and he wins. This sounds, this match is very, very boring as I pointed out. It sounds like the cheapest win you can think of. People were jumping up mm-hmm. and down that Hunter beat Kane in this manner. I could not figure out why they cared. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why China's in the corporation. I'm really not sure uh, why the show is beating they Nitro so heavily. that. They explained it? It's, I guess it happened on Heat. Something along the lines of she wanted the spotlight or something like so, that somewhere on raw cole said she had taken the money our money and spotlight attention i i don't know it doesn't make any sense so one day she just <laughs> became greedy friends. yes <laughs> wow 
<laughs> what a great storyline. <laughs> huh. So, yeah, uh, China challenged Hunter to some something vague. As yeah, we don't know. She yeah. goes. She goes in two weeks. I want you at Saint Valentine's Day, and then they cut away. Yeah. Yes. Does she want it for Valentine's Day? The pay per view? Are they gonna have a match? Yes, he, they're gonna. Are they gonna go up, to dinner? We broke up, but you still owe me chocolates. Jesus Christ! What was this? So that was raw. A weird show. Very weird. Are right, you ready for your music? Oh yeah. The finishes on this show were DQ due to outside interference, pin after a guy was distracted by his own managers, pin after a weapon shot. DQ due to an attack that was apparently welcomed. Clean pin, I suppose, in a hardcore tag team match. Cage escape, thanks to abundant interference from multiple people. That's it, baby. Man, oh man. Wow. Aaron, any final thoughts on this Raw show here? Was it as you remembered as a, as a young child? You know what? I guarantee that it seemed a lot cooler at the time. Well, that's for sure. Adolescent, seeing, you know, like the Ministry of Darkness probably looked pretty cool back then because it had never kind of been done before. At least, Titties. You know. Yeah, a lot of uh, sex. I mean, you know, you didn't see that a lot, I guess, back in 99. But looking at it now, just trying to follow a lot of these storylines, this is so much, and you get one segment, 30 seconds. Next segment, 30 seconds. Match of two minutes. Segment, 30 seconds. Try writing all this stuff down. You have to keep pausing the damn show and rewinding. It gets a little confusing. Yep. And then a 12-minute random cage match with Triple H and Kane. Is it? I think Kane got busted open, too. I heard, like, Badly. blood running down his arm. Yeah, he was bleeding all over his arm. What happened? From the chair shot. That was a chair shot? Bad, bad chair shot. Man, oh, man. Yes, so. Oh, man, there you go. Raw number 298, according to the network, also aired February 8th, 1999. <sighs> Let's go quick. Steve Austin comes out for a promo. Says he's fighting mankind tonight, and he's fine with that. Starts writing down Vince. Guarantees he will beat, Vince, beat Vince's ass in the cage. Walk over his carcass to mania. Cole will not shut up. Nope. No. My favorite was when Austin guarantees there will be a lot of blood shed in the cage, and it won't be his. And Cole says... That means McMahon's blood. Thanks, God, Cole. You're right. Nothing gets by you, Michael Fuck. Cole. Sleuth. Out comes Mankind, who is still champion in case you'd forgotten. He said, yes, I will face you, Steve Austin, in a non-title match tonight, but I think you'll win at St. Valentine's Day. I think I'll win at St. Valentine's Day. Then we'll have another match at Mania. And he got a new shirt. Foley? Yeah. Good for him. He said, I got a new shirt. Oh, I see. The cool. corporation interrupts. Rock runs down Mankind for a while. Vince guarantees in his steel cage match with Steve Austin, and he goes, the whole corporation's out there. He runs them down one by one. Shane, Kane, Test, Bossman, Rock, nobody on the stage will interfere in the cage match or I will fire all of you. He does not guarantee you will win. No. He only guarantees not one corporate or family member mm -hmm. will in any way, shape, or form interfere on Sunday. And then, uh... He made himself the guest referee for the Austin Mankind match tonight. Okay, this went like 20 minutes. Yes. It took us like a minute to recap it. Yeah. This was the beginning of just excruciatingly long 20-minute promos. It wasn't even that good. No. With a lot of good talkers out there. Mm-hmm. Deborah was shown lotioning her legs backstage. Mark Henry was enjoying this on a monitor. What a creep. <laughs> you just now figured that out? Well. D'Lo Brown versus Jeff Jarrett. D'Lo cuts a promo saying, Mark, I can't have you being distracted by Deborah, so I got you someone who will do whatever you want, whenever you want, and he introduces to the WWF Ivory. His own personal whore. A concubine. I can't, apparently, yeah. yeah. That was her gimmick. I had forgotten this. By the way, D'Lo, not wearing the chest protector for whatever reason. And it run his course. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I don't, I don't need an explanation for something stupid going away. So Ivory comes out in a red dress and waving a random purple scarf. Cole hints, I've seen her before somewhere. So my, Michael Cole watched Glow. Henry gives her just a big hug. Was it Wow or Glow? Glow. He just, it, for, for, there he, was another one too, but that's... It was pow. Yeah. Pow. Yeah. There may have been Wow. There have been a few. What the hell was Pow? Powerful women of wrestling. That'd be Pow. <laughs> You're right. Understood. You are smarter than the people running Pow. Okay. So... 
Henry just gives her a big hug like she's an old friend. Not like she's a sexual servant being presented to her by D'Lo Brown. Match goes one minute. Jared takes the figure four. Deborah takes the ref. Ivory gets in the ring to distract Jarrett. D'Lo hits the power bomb. The ref counts three. Ivory is still in the ring. Deborah gets in Ivory's face. They have a terrible cat fight, and that's it. I got nothing to add. Earlier today, Val Venus was fucking Ryan Shamrock in one of the Skydome hotel rooms. Mm-hmm. Benny doesn't pull punches. That's well, what happened. <laughs> understood. This is Ron the Attitude Era. That's exactly what happened. Well, that, they follow this after commercial with a video package of Val fucking Ryan Shamrock over and over again, although I will say it was not as exciting as that sounds. They might have made love. I mean, it doesn't have to be ugly. <laughs> it's yes. Val Venus, dude. Come on. So, Ken Shamrock's Andy. So, they keep going from Val and uh, Val and Ryan, who is not, she's Ryan Shamrock now. So it goes back and forth from Val and Ryan making love to <laughs> to to Ken Shamrock being very, very angry. And somewhere in here, they piped in uh, or entered in a, a cut of Michael Cole saying, his head's going to explode. I didn't know which one he was talking about. More Val and Shamrock. Val comes out for a problem with Ryan. Kevin Kelly says, you're just trying to get a rise out of Ken. And Val says, no, Ryan's getting a rise out of me. Ken hits the ring to kill Val. Referees hit the ring. Shamrock kills all of them. Nobody who booked this segment figured that might happen. <laughs> hey, let's just do an interview segment with Val Venus and Ken's sister. That'll go fine. After the break, more Val. <laughs> Ryan Shamrock's rubbing his shoulders. Val says, I'm going to end all this tonight. Gold Dust versus Gilbert. Of course, this is right when Tony walks in. <laughs> fucking big screen there's blue dust the blue meanie naked rubbing himself and covered in blue paint yeah. why the fuck does this happen every week <laughs> it's inevitable so of course gold fair, dust is there's so many segments on the show don't even don't, don't skip over the fact that this gilberg they did the whole gilberg entrance even though this joke died the first time yeah we will beat you with this joke until you yeah. start to laugh yeah exactly so we get five minutes of gilberg it sucks match begins blue dust is naked on the screen fondling himself uh, Goldust is distracted. Gilbert gets a win. He's now one and one, I guess. Hey, one 19 two. years ago this week, Goldust still working with them cruiserweights. Yes. That's true. Nuts. True. Goldust pops up after being pinned, kicks Gilbert in the nuts. The lights go out. There's a blue strobe light going off. This is all one segment still. I don't have epilepsy, but I almost <laughs> fainted watching this. This fucking blue strobe light. Blue Dust appears behind Goldust. The lights go out. The lights come up. Goldust is now covered in blue paint. He walks to the back. What's with Vince Russo and paint? Ugh. <sighs> You know how many Vince Russo shows ended with a guy covered in paint? How many? Like, at least a third of them. There was a Vampiro. There was the Brood. There's Blue Dust. Yeah, I was I was kidding. Didn't Shamrock or uh, Savage do it to Nash once? Probably. Probably. Where's Macho Man been anyway? Oh, uh, that's a good question about showed Macho. Up with, yeah, he, he showed up. He made one appearance, uh, fought the giant, left. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Wrong. No, you're right. Uh, Earl Hebner. Sweating profusely. <laughs> the hell was he doing he was in that prior segment wrestling Ken Shamrock mm. running away from him he says none of his refs will referee the Ken Shamrock Val Venus match if Shamrock cannot find a ref to volunteer then he will forfeit that match and Val will be the new champion okay whatever <laughs> DX comes out for a promo I didn't write down a word they said they just rambled on and on and on they, all, they each ran down their opponent for the pay-per-view uh, it's going to be Hunter and X-Pac, X-Pac versus Kane and China. So Hunter was sure to point out China does not have a penis or testicles. And Billy goes last. He says, hey, it's not fair. You guys all have a match. I don't. I know. And he pulls off his shirt. He has a ref shirt. He will officiate the Ken Shamrock Val Venus match. It's fine. Steve Austin versus Mankind in a non-title match with Vince McMahon as ref. Top of the hour. Top of the hour. Two big, the, the biggest star and another big star and a third big star. Yes. Vince goes over the referee's instructions beforehand. This Vince awesome. all jacked up in the referee shirt. Of course. Vince going over the referee's instructions may have been the best thing on the show. No handshakes, he says. Ruba goes out the window. Eye gouging is legal. The use of tables or chairs or other furniture is acceptable. Kicks to the groin are appreciated. Now show the world you're a bunch of Neanderthal animals. It was awesome. So Austin says, let me get this straight. You want somebody to get their ass kicked in this ring tonight. And Vince, of course, an idiot, says, Yes! And Austin says, Well, I'm not going to get my ass kicked. And Mankind is going to get his ass kicked. And Vince, 
His eyes grow wide. Oh, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> the fuck did I not think of this? They're going to kick my ass. And but, sure enough, they kick his but ass. But then he realizes if Austin hits him, yes. then he can fire Austin. So Austin says, I'm not going to kick your ass, Vince. And Mankind's not going to kick your ass. He is. And Mankind has pulled out Socko. He puts the Socko claw on Vince. Leaves him laying. I just love that Vince is a heel character and he's such a damn idiot. Yeah. And he gets mm -hmm. his every single week. Even on his show where he's going to get big revenge, yeah. he still was a fool yes. at the center point of this show. How do they forget that key tenet? I don't know. So the corporation runs out to make the save and Austin and Mankind whip all their asses. Go to commercial. When they come back, the corporation comes out on stage for a promo. Vince is pissed. He books Austin against the corporation in the gauntlet match, although not The Rock. Because Rock's already booked. Godfather versus because the Rock's Viscera. already booked in that match with Steve Blackman. Well, he also he didn't want to. It's because he wanted to save Rock and Austin. Actually, Godfather and Viscera was not nearly as bad as I was expecting. It was no good. I wish somebody would make like a video montage of a hoe tripping every single <laughs> fucking week. And her high heel fall off. Has there been one week where the hoe hasn't tripped coming out? I was. You're right. It, that, that definitely happened. But I was far more. Uh, what's the word here? Um, focused on the fact that. The astonishingly large fake boobs. Godfather found some talent in Toronto. All three of them. There Not were some enormous fake boobies here in Toronto. Yeah, I don't. I don't see the problem. It was wrestling in the nineties. There's going to be a lot more. So, Midian is on commentary. Oh my gosh! I mean, this one, this one woman they had out there. Brian wants to dwell on the boobs. No, I just got to point this out. Oh, okay. She turns her back to the camera. Yes. And she is so skinny. Mm -hmm. Like, she's barely wider than her spine. I don't think I've ever seen someone this skinny before. And then she turns around, and they're like, out to here! How? Network description. This must be a painful life. Well, that's probably true, actually. So... Midian is on commentary, and he has a message, and that is that on pay-per-view, you must pay to watch this, <laughs> Midian is going to wrestle the big boss man. Oh, yeah. God. Okay. What the hell? Give me one reason in or out of storyline for this match to happen. I can't. In character, big boss man is a paid flunky for Vince McMahon. Midian is a kidnapped Flunky for The Undertaker. But mm -hmm. something's Why are going they on because we're going to have Boss Man and Undertaker in Mania. Right. With the hanging. So they must have a random Midian Boss Man. Match. There's something going on here. Hmm. Did you mention that Midian has a jar with an eye in it? Midian has a jar with an eyeball. Cool. <laughs> I'd rather watch that than Midian. Uh, match with a minute. Midian attacked for the DQ. Yep. This show sucks. <laughs> yes. I, it's ex this show is the worst, I wrote. Yeah. This show sucks. I wrote this show sucks and this show is the worst in the same paragraph. So this must have been a really bad segment. Oh, it was. <laughs> it was. Just, it was. Val Venus, Ken Shamrock, and Billy Gunn had a brawl backstage. X-Pac versus Kane. They did some stuff. X-Pac made a comeback trying to nutshot it in for the DQ. <laughs> She's so bad. <laughs> she body slams him. She's going for the pedigree. Hunter can't have anyone stealing his finisher. He runs out to chase him away. And, uh, oh, she wanted to fight, but Kane pulled her away, and that was about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and then Kane carries her away, making a very conscious effort to point her thonged ass right at the camera. Yes. Yep. Oh. <laughs> this was worse than Vincent and It was less entertaining. The cat. It was less entertaining. It was not worse. Fuck. Al Snow fighting himself. Al Snow says, first of all, He's going to have his second match in the best two out of three series with Road Dog at the pay-per-view. Road Dog just got into rehab. Oh, oh great. That's where he's been. Uh -huh. well, he was on the show, wasn't he? He was there no. last week. Oh. No, he went into rehab before the show. Okay. So Al says, no one will have a hardcore match with me tonight. I will have one with myself. He pulls out Plunder. He hits himself in the head. He sprays himself with a fire extinguisher. Breaks a kendo stick over his head. Throws himself through a table. What year did Fight Club come out? About this time. Hmm, I think. It was even earlier, I think. Goes on for a while. Out comes Bob Holly. Oh, no, 99. Look at that. There you yeah. go. Bob says, Al, stop it. Al pushes him. Bob beat his ass. Here I wrote, this show was not meant for human consumption. 
This went on for a long fucking time. Finally, they send out geeks to break it up. And I'm like, why didn't they send him out when Al Snow was wrestling himself? He wasn't hurting anybody. So officially... Except him. Officially, this was not a match. But this horrible, pointless, awful brawl was longer than all the actual matches in the show put together up to this point. It's true. Kevin Kelly interviews Draws backstage. Draws this, was, this was amazing. Was it? I'll go into detail. I'll then. tell you why. No, you don't hat. have to. I'll just, Does it a... involve his hat? No, here's what it is. The very next match is The Rock versus Steve Blackman. Yeah. So right before that match, you show a video of Steve Blackman being a hero. Yeah. And then followed up with Rock just beating his ass like a geek. Yes. Draws upset. Kevin Kelly called him a punk. He punches Kelly. Blackman chases him away and immediately goes down to the ring to wrestle The Rock. Mm -hmm. So it was 1999. There were no Bizarro references. But at this point, Rock was the biggest heel in the company. And 100% of the Canadian crowd loved him. He made a comeback. He How ironic, his... by the way. Yeah. That Rock Hogan match a few years later. It's only yeah. where they turned on him. Four years? Yeah, 2002. Three years. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Rock destroys it. Well, he, he did give him uh, some offense to meet his comeback. I, I mean, say. it was versus Steve Blackman. That's also true. He hit his finish and won. Everyone loved him. Steve Austin versus the Corporation in a gauntlet match. Dude, there's eight minutes of TV time left. And Steve Austin has got to go through the entire the entire corporation that gives you a little hint right there so I, I i had some notes here at the beginning first of all this may have been the birth of a you screwed brett chant mm, no no okay no no okay. chance in hell debuted that's true the song yep that's true that was the debut on this show so they chanted that earl so I, all i did was copy and paste the same sentence six times and just change the name that's all you had to do nice start with a shamrock Austin hit a stunner out of nowhere, but test attack for the DQ. Well, hold on. First. Okay. See, I didn't even get into detail. This is a one-minute match, but I just had to mention this. Shamrock puts Steve Austin in the ankle lock. His finish. Mm -hmm. How does Steve Austin get out? He just got out. <laughs> That's about it. He didn't do the old forward roll and the guy bumps no. or whatever. He's got his ankle, and Austin's in a wheelbarrow position, and he just walks forward. <laughs> And got out. Yeah. And then stuns the guy. Yes. In the one minute. Well, that's why he left UFC. His submission game had fallen fuck. apart. So. And there's no announcement of what the finish is. No bell. Cole, no, Cole no. has to explain to us, must have been a DQ. Actually, the first thing he says is, that should be a DQ. Yeah. And but the was. ref doesn't call for anything. Yeah. No bell. They just send the next key. They had in. eight minutes. Yeah. So. He's another shamrock. Austin hit a stun out of nowhere. Test attack for the DQ. Austin hit a stun right out of nowhere. Kane attacked for the DQ. Austin hit a stun right out of nowhere. China attacked for the DQ. Austin hit a stun right out of nowhere. Bossman attacked for the DQ. Bossman attacked Austin with a nice stick for the DQ. That was the swerve. Yeah. So. By the way, this was a taped show. Mm -hmm. They didn't need to rush. What do you mean? This was taped. Yeah. They Did didn't we need, need to rush. 15 minutes of wrestling with eight DQs in the middle? Just get it done and out of the way. I'm fine with that. Okay. So Austin attacks Boston with a night. Uh, Bossman attacks Austin with a nightstick for the DQ. Beats him up. Vince is the last man in. He pins Austin. Austin has lost the gauntlet match. And then the corporation holds Austin down in the corner, and Vince is in his face barking at him. And this is actually a very iconic visual because it was awesome. It used a thousand. It was times. the only good thing on the entire show. It sold thousands of DVDs and pay per views. Show sucked. Yeah, Vince was the greatest heel ever, just right there in Austin's face. He's screaming at him. He's pouring his beer all over him. Austin's trapped in the corner. He can't do anything about it. He's yelling back at Vince. That was great. Mm -hmm. Only good thing on the entire show was the last 30 seconds of Raw. Terrible. Well, there's only one thing to do now. Well, Vinny, hit your music. The finishes on this show were... Pin after interference and a distraction and a non-participant in the ring. An advertised match that didn't happen. A DQ in one minute. A DQ in four minutes. A clean fucking pin. Five disqualifications in a row. And then what I guess would technically qualify as a clean pin in the main event. Kinda. Hit the guy with a nightstick. But well, I guess it was a clean pin. It was, it, it, from that match... Vince didn't do anything illegal. WWF Retro Raw number 299, also February 15th, 1999. 
opened up with picks of the two big matches from St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Rock and Mankind went to a draw in a last man standing match. So Mankind retained the title. And then Steve Austin destroyed Vince McMahon in a cage match. And he won after The Giant debuted. Threw him into the cage. The cage, the wall of the cage folded out and Austin dropped to the floor to win. So, The Giant's last appearance on Nitro was January 11th. Here we are, February 15th. I guess that's 30 days. But man, it just, they, they made Giant earn every penny of his contract, is all I can say. So Shawn Michaels comes out. And he immediately brings out Steve Austin and Mankind. And it hit me later that 17 years after this show, these same three men would go down the ramp at WrestleMania and beat up the League of Nations. That's right. I'd forgotten about that. Yes. That's crazy. So before anything else can happen, Vince comes out in a neck brace. He's very sad. He says he is a broken man and a humbled man. The fans call him an asshole, and he just cannot believe their cruelty. <laughs> the look of sadness on his face. Why are you all so mean to me, he asked. He asked what kind of people they were. He began to cry about all the horrible things Austin had done to him the night before. Which, by the way, if you have not seen that show in a while, Vince does a Shawn Michaels bump off the cage onto an announce table. Uh-huh. Yeah. This is, like, as bad as that Royal Rumble match or that Battle Royal elimination where he caught his neck on the ropes. I forgot about it until you mentioned it right now. Oh, yeah, I, my I, God. I can remember now the way his head flopped around on mm-hmm. contact. I mean, this may as well have been a legit neck brace. I don't know how his head stayed on. Yeah. Said he wanted to bury the hatchet with Austin and get a fresh start, and all Steve had to do was say he was sorry. Vince is the best heel. This is already... There has ever been. We're three minutes in. It's 700 times better than Nitro. I want to bury the hatchet. I want to start over. All you have to say, Steve Austin, is I'm sorry. It's all Austin's fault. And he means it. Yes. He, he, in Vince's mind, it's his fault. He's being the bigger man and <laughs> yes. being generous enough to give Austin a chance to apologize like he should. Yes. Austin says he is sorry he didn't beat Vince's ass even worse. So Vince changes tactics. He means to address Sean and says, Sean, you are still the commissioner of this company. You need to give these people what they want and they want a championship rematch. And everyone cheered because... <laughs> They want a championship match. So, I don't want to make fun of these fans. But they're just absolute morons. <laughs> Vince says, these people deserve a rematch, and they cheer, and then he specifies Mankind versus The Rock, and they boo. That did happen. So, you idiots didn't even know what a rematch was. I guess. Right? Well, on this topic of booing... Mankind says he got his ass kicked last night. He wants seven days to heal, and they can do it on Raw next week. And then the fans oh, man. fans booed Mankind, and they booed louder when The Rock came out. Well, they tried to hit Rock's music immediately because they knew that that line was going to get booed, but they didn't hit it fast enough, and Mankind got booed yeah. for being a coward. So Rock insults them for a while. Mankind accepts the challenge. Now Vince is badgering Sean. Make it a ladder match. And Sean agrees. And Vince then says, one last thing. There will be a special referee for the WrestleMania title match. And he brings out Paul White, who is the big show, if you're not paying attention. Yeah. You know, The Rock is out there. And once again, he goes, the millions. Dead silence. Mm -hmm. It's like he's coming from the future. You know what I mean? (laughs) It's like it's modern day Rock going back and doing his catchphrase. And he does the pause, and he's baffled that no one is doing it with him. They still have not caught on. It's been like three weeks now, and he tries. He never gives up. He is determined to get this over, and he does eventually. He does, in fact. More power to this man. A great man. Jeff Jarrett and Deborah versus D'Lo Brown and Ivory. This right here, the dumbest fucking thing I've ever seen. (laughs) Let me just explain this, everybody. It is Jeff Jarrett and Deborah. Mm Mm-hmm. In a mixed tag match against D'Lo Brown and Ivory. Are we all on the same page here? Yeah. Okay. So in this mixed tag match, Deborah and Ivory get in the ring. They get a fight. And the referee calls for a disqualification. That happened. The women were disqualified for wrestling in a wrestling match they were in. Yes. Who the fuck came up with this? The pop when these two 
started, well, having a cat fight. This crowd lost their mind, and then that's where it peaked, and the ref threw the match out. <laughs> that's what happened. I guess maybe he figured, you know what? They're not going to like this match any more than like it right now. I'm going to do everyone a favor. I don't know. I hope you wrote it down exactly like that when I hit this music at the end here. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I did write it down. I, that was so I was stupid. I was not as outraged as you, but I did ask for what? They're legal participants. <laughs> they were wrestling in a wrestling match, and they were disqualified. I like Jarrett and Deborah come out first, and then Dilo and I have hit the ring, and Jarrett and Deborah jump down like, like they're scared. Only Deborah can't stop laughing. Yeah, that was a good moment. Let's see what else. Here we are, nineteen years later, in, in, our, in another cosmic coincidence. We happen to watch this match when Ivory's going to the Hall of Fame, and there is now a mixed match challenge going on as well. Yeah, Every, time is a flat circle. It's nuts. Yeah. Didn't D'Lo give Ivory to Mark Henry last week? Yeah, that was her debut as a, as a sex slave. Basically. Yes, yeah, that's exactly what happened. I guess he's done. That is what happened, Tony. Just one time. He's gobsmacked. Oh, it's a week. Just- <laughs> One time a week. We saw, we saw how long Tori We got to remember laughing. there's heat. I see. Something may happen on a show we don't watch. Yeah. Yeah. Or the pay-per-view the night before. Hmm. Anyway, Deborah broke the guitar over Ivory's back. Place went nuts for this. Yeah. yeah. Got she get. sold it great. Yeah. And Owen Hart ran out, helped his team to the back, and that was that. Corporation was backstage welcoming, welcoming Paul White on board. DX came out and Hunter made jokes about China pinning him last night. Said it had been her first time on top of a man. And then he challenged her. Do we have a counter for this? He challenged her to, to uh, get the big red retard and come out and face us in a tag match. So out comes China, Kane, and Shane McMahon. Shane says there will be no rematch because I'm giving China the night off. So Xbox says, let's trade one bitch for another bitch and you be in the match, Shane. Shane hesitated, so Hunter called him a puss. Wanted a yes or a no. And Shane finally challenged X-Pac to put the European belt on the line in the tag match, and X-Pac accepted. (sighs) Val Venus was playing tonsil hockey with Ryan Shamrock backstage. Mankind was practicing climbing ladders backstage, doing a poor job of it. (laughs) I realized that he was losing on the show. Maybe he didn't care anymore. Well, to be fair, he was limping all night long. So They they claimed he had suffered a dislocated knee, and I, I, I buy it. It's very possible he was trying to see if he could actually climb a ladder. That's true. That's true. Billy Gunn versus Val Venus for the Intercontinental title. This feud needs to end soon. Well, I've got bad news for you. <laughs> I understand, but it just needs to end. So, uh, yeah, the night before, Val beat Ken Shamrock for the Intercontinental title with Billy as ref, and Ryan was there too, and I, I couldn't care enough. To, I couldn't be bothered to write it down. So they loved Val when he came out. They booed him when he said he was the new IC champ. He made some sex jokes. The match begins. It goes one minute. Ryan Shamrock is on the apron for Christ knows what reason. Billy Gunn knocks her off while running the ropes. She falls down. He is distracted. Val does not care. Val pins Billy with a German suplex. With a bridge. With a bridge. Yeah. Of all things. Yep. Billy, Mr. Ass from D Generation Next is a gentleman and goes to check on Ryan to make sure she's okay. Val, of course, does not care. So, Billy leaves, Ryan limps into the ring, Val then dumps her. Yeah, it was weird, like, she gets in the ring, and I guess she said, we did it. That was what we're Because to... he just grabs the mic and goes, we did it? And he says, it's been real, it's been good, but it hasn't been real good. I'm, he actually says this, I'm kicking you to the curb. Yes. <laughs> so... He says he's rocking in the top. There's no more room on the ride for her. I actually like that line better. She is shocked. Like, she's just kind of smiling like, I've been dumped. Yeah, I guess. They go to commercial, they come back. Now she's crying. Yes. It's it all, is now sunk yeah, in that the porn in. star has kicked her to the curb. Yes. There must have been another lady. So, but thank God Billy Gunn is there. William Gunn. <laughs> uh, a, a proper gentleman. Yes. A chivalrous lad like this should be referred, by, to, uh, referred to as William Gunn. And he's trying to apologize to her when Ken Shamrock runs in and attacks him. Why? Because he's talking to his sister. Okay, I'll get it that way. Okay, because what Billy was saying, he wasn't hitting on her or anything. No, it doesn't matter. Ken's crazy. Okay, yeah, he's no one is allowed to talk to his sister under any circumstance. He snaps. Okay, that Uh, all the time. That makes sense. That's his gimmick. That doesn't in in the restaurants in grocery stores. He just snaps. So just for the record, the the 
Billy Gunn Geek Parade of 1999 continues as he is pinned in a minute and then beat up backstage afterwards. The Ministry of Darkness came out for a promo. When these guys came out, I just got the picture of all these Halloween characters walking out on yep. the ramp, and I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Well, there's that. I was thinking, do we really need this many people? You've got The Undertaker, The Acolytes, Viscera, Midian, and The Brood. Eight wrestlers, eight wrestlers, and Paul Bearer as a mouthpiece. Yeah. Who the first thing he says is, they don't have much use for me anymore. Mm -hmm. And then Taker talks. So, at the pay-per-view the night before, they had kidnapped the big boss man. And why wouldn't you? Dude, look at this crew. (laughs) Taker says, they let him go, but they had only done it to prove that they could take out the heart and soul of the corporation. The heart and soul of the corporation, the big boss man. They take him out whenever they wanted. Why does he hate the corporation? Why is this feud happening? Who the fuck knows? So... Well, Taker explained he wants to buy WWE. Is that it? Well, he didn't say that. He said he'd own it. Own it. And I presume that he's he saved a lot of money. Uh-huh. I don't know. So the fans were quiet, except for some boring chants. Eventually, Boss Man comes out, comes out to challenge them. Can I talk about his promo? Yeah. He says... I got two guys... And we want to take on any three members of the ministry tonight. You know what I mean? Sure. No, that's what he said. Oh. (laughs) I didn't catch that. Yeah, I know what you mean, dude. (laughs) You want a six man. Yeah, hold on. Let me... uh... Like, he just sputtered out. He had nothing more to add after that. It's like, I got two guys. We'll take on you three. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. See ya. Yeah, there's no long division involved or anything like that. No, just no, that no remainders. Don't yeah, carry the one. It's, yeah, it's pretty cut and dry. Taker warned him to be careful what he asked for. Triple H and X Pac versus Kane and Shane. Oh my God, Shane! That's, that's how he was announced. Not Shane McMahon. Shane. I don't think there was anyone in the YWF worse than Shane McMahon was in this match. <laughs> oh my God, what a backyarder! I thought he was much better than he is in nineteen or in 2018. He's well, he had better cardio and he was a little faster, but like as a wrestler, he sucks. He was more of a side yarder, actually. His, his he had to graduate to the backyard. Yeah. He would at least do like clubbering forearms and make contact with his elbow in the back of the guy's head instead of whatever those trying to catch a fly punches he does now. I will say that like every time he ran away, the fans went nuts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And every time the baby faces got their hands on him, the place went nuts. Absolutely. So I got to give the guy credit for that, but in the ring, he sucked. The way this was put together for the story they wanted to do, this was a perfect match. The story is, Kane's a giant monster who can kill us whenever he wants. China is not in this match, but she's going to interfere like crazy, and she's dangerous when, when you know, in a fair fight even. And Shane has is helpless, and he can't hurt us, and when we touch him, we'll hurt him. So every time Kane was in there, he's running wild, throwing them both around. Shane gets cocky, he tags in, he's immediately cut off and beaten savagely. Everyone cheers. It went great. Hunter makes a comeback, starts crotch chopping, and Jerry Lawler says, why is Hunter wasting all that time doing all that chopping? <laughs> so Crazy. It goes on Wait, you see my chopping block shirt. I got one of those, too. Excellent. Maybe I'll wear it next week. So Hunter and Kane. F4wonline.com slash shirts. Mm. Yeah. I just want to throw that out It's a there. great design, by the way. Hunter, Hunter and Kane brawl to the back. China clonks X-Pac with the belt. She puts Shane on top for the win. Shane. So Shane pins X-Pac. Shane, per, per steps of the match, is the new European champion. And the best part of it, he's barely conscious, but he's holding onto his belt, and China throws him over her shoulder, and <laughs> very easily just carries him back up to the ramp. Yeah. That was awesome. You know, I got to say, as much as the fans hated Shane, when he won the European title, they just went silent. <laughs> like, What? <laughs> They have effectively killed the Cruiserweight and the European title in over the last yes. what, three months now? Yeah. Yeah. We've got Shane McMahon, European champion, and Gil Berg. Oh, that's right. Cruiserweight mm. champion. Yeah. Two I, dead belts. I think uh, at one point, Shane must have potatoed X-Pac at least no a dozen shit. times. I don't X- think he's ever had a match he didn't potato somebody. X-Pac threw him into the corner and did that, that roundhouse kick and just clobbered him in the jaw with his foot. It was great. It is great whenever Shane gets hit. Oh, terrible. You remember when Kane hit Shane? Oh, that we was talked funny. about that for years. <laughs> that was funny. Somebody but that wasn't it. in the face. It was not in the face. No, it was, it was into the back. 
<laughs> it's like I'm gonna get you. And it echoed throughout. And the his arena. arm like extended this long, like Kane's <laughs> arm extended twice its normal size. Someday we need to. Re- Someday we will just review that moment. That. Yes. Yeah. Kevin Kelly interviews Shane backstage. The corporation's all pouring wine and champagne everywhere. He pours it on Kane, and Kane is not happy to get wet. No. That's why he hit him later. I guess so. Years uh, later. Years later. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get you back. Bob Holly versus Steve Blackman for the hardcore title. Sucked. They brawled backstage, hit each other with stuff, draws ran in, hit Blackman with something, Holly covered him for the pin, and I did in fact write, sucked. <laughs> it did. <laughs> So, Where's Road Dog when we need him? Now Holly... Rehab, as we talked that's about. That's right. Because he's got a pin in the loading bay or wherever. Holly now has to go jogging back to the ring to celebrate and cut his promo. Gets back there and says, This company has been for years now. They've been sticking me with terrible gimmicks and lousy last names and weak tag team partners. You know what's so amazing? This is one of those things about pro wrestling that I really can't decide if I love it or I hate it. Bob Holly has randomly had a hardcore title match on a random edition of Raw in a random city, mm. okay? He wins, he goes to the ring, he cuts his completely random promo. What's that say Bob Holly cut a promo? He mentions his goofy-ass names and his weak tag partners. And lo and behold, there's fucking Bart Gunn. Bart Gunn just happens to Amazing. be there. He has not been around since... He won Brawl for All and, and vanished. vanished. Yeah, it's yeah. been months. But, hey... You mentioned weak ass partners. Here I am, buddy. I he's just there. Jumped up from wherever the hell I live in Texas to here in Alabama in three seconds. He teleported. Yeah. He so. got zero reaction. Well, yeah. When that guy came out on the ramp, it was deadly silent. Yeah. For the brawl for all winner Bart Gun. They've yeah. lost more money in things, but as far as just sheer stupidity and failure, the brawl for all was the dumbest thing they ever did. It's up there. Well, also by sheer coincidence, Butterbean was in the crowd. I, was. Uh, it's amazing. He knew Bart Gunn was going to be there so they could talk about <laughs> That's right. Butterbean and Bart Gunn. Crazy. Mm-hmm. So he's upset. Bob called him a weak tag team partner. Bob says, I'm the only one who fought you in Brawl for All and didn't get knocked out. And they agreed to have a title match next week. Sable comes out for a promo. At She's some, a heel now. At some point, she turned heel. Today. I'm right here. Yeah. She turned babyface with that outfit she was wearing with me. It's the same outfit she always wears. It's the sable. Yeah, it's the cat suit. I don't care. Okay. Well, I think you noticed she had new boobs for like the ninth time <laughs> over true. the last year. So she bragged about all the magazine covers she was going to be on, including Playboy. All the TV shows she'd be doing. Playboy, TV Guide, <laughs> and Raw Magazine. Mm. Yes. Well, they're all in the same part, right? Sure, yeah. And the, I believe the TV show was... You're Regis embarrassed Cassidy. to buy them all. <laughs> Actually, of the three. <laughs> Playboy's the least offensive. Yes. So, she she thanks the fans, but she does so in a very sarcastic, phony manner. Yeah. And then Tori hits the ring. Security holds her back, but Sable says, no, nah, no, nah, let her go. And then Sable cuts a promo on Tori. You're a nut. You'll never be like me. You're just a wannabe like everyone else. And um, They that- had to let her go for her to do that? Because then she just had her arrested again. And then they just left, right? Yeah. Because I stopped writing there. I was, I was so moved. <laughs> Boss Man and Test and Shamrock versus the Acolytes and Midian. Oh, God. So here's where they showed Butterbean in the front row and talked about him wanting a match against Bart Gunn. Match goes two minutes. The lights go out. The Undertaker appears on stage. He brings the lights up. Now his dudes are on the ramp. And the rest of the ministry comes out and they have kidnapped Shane. Oh, no. Taker threatens to tear his heart out. Shane is like dangling. Taker's got him by, like, by the lapels and Shane's on, on his knees. Shane's literally screaming, don't kill me. Don't cut me. Yeah. Don't cut me. Well, I mean, he's been watching the show. Mm-hmm. That's what Undertaker does. He cuts people. Yeah. Remember, terrible. He cut up Midian. Yeah. Just once. Well, we've only seen it once. <laughs> well, presumably, he cut all those guys. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just and that doesn't make it okay. I, I, I haven't thought of that. Understood. But cut, is that the saying, cut me once, he's shame not, on you, cut me a, twice? He, we don't know that he's a serial cutter. I mean, Yeah, we do. No, That's only, the storyline. He's only done one. No, we've seen one, geek. He sacrificed all these guys. Mm. Anyway, Talk about this main event. Shane Taker does not kill Shane. He gives him a letter and says, give this to your dad. Yeah. This sucked. Rock versus Mankind in a ladder match. He hadn't the- written it up yesterday when he had the boss man. He's like, fuck, kidnapped the boss man, but I forgot my letter. 
We'll get Shane tomorrow. We have already made the Ministry of Darkness better than it actually was. <laughs> Combine the Ministry of Darkness with The Office, and you get good TV. You think he wrote it in his own blood? It came so, out of the knife. Well, he's a serial cutter. Sitting there with a pen, so pricking his finger, going, falling. All right, so anyway, the Mankind uh, and the Rock in a ladder match for the WWE title. With Austin doing commentary. This was a great match. It was a yeah. Great TV made of This was great. And you know what? I don't think Mankind got hit in the head once with a chair. He did not. They now, did a lot of things where they would leave the ladder on top of each other and hit the ladder. Yep. Well, one time the ladder did fall up top of him. That happened. Well, yeah. That the, was the worst right. thing. Oh, the. They ropes? were brawling. Uh, maybe. Oh, no, that too. But they, they were brawling through the crowd. And. Mankind says, I'm going to lay down a guardrail here on the cement, oh. lay you on the guardrail, and I'm going to start dropping elbows. And he dropped elbows on the cement. And he hit one, and he missed one after that, and that was vicious. My favorite spot is Foley is on the ladder. Rock gets a chair and knocks him off the ladder. Foley not only takes like a totally out of control terrible bump, but on the way down, he... He gets his own arm wrapped between the top and the middle rope. Yep. This was incredible. I think he did it on purpose. I'm sure he did. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, he's and, a and, very talented man. And then he is trapped, and Rock comes over and punches him, and it's great. So Steve Austin's on commentary. And he's being awesome. He's running down about how much he hates Rock, but he respects him and how a tough bastard mankind is. And in the middle of it, Michael Cole says, Hey, Lawler, you're being pretty quiet. And there's a pause. And Austin says, well, I was in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> and Lawler says, yes, Michael. When there's a guest commentator, I heard you shut up and let them speak. And Austin says, when is Jim Ross coming back? <laughs> it was awesome. Tremendous. So they have this great fight. And the, 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 the big payoff is, oh, the rock bottom for the announce desk. They got that in there. So they're brawling on top of the ladder underneath the belt. Mankind has him in the Socko Claw. It's his finishing hold. He's going to put him unconscious, let him fall to get the belt and win. And out comes Paul White. And Paul White grabs him. And because of where the ladder was, I don't know if this is their plan or just worked out this way, but he didn't just do a choke slam. He did like a spinning choke slam. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. <laughs> it was poetic. This, this, this spiraling choke slam where he drops him down. Then he just leaves. Didn't even wait for Rock to win. I guess he knew he hit his move. He was done. And Rock grabbed the belt and won. So Cheap finish, but a hell of a match. A hell of a match. When yeah. all is said and done, Rock and Mankind traded this title five or six times. I don't think they had a clean finish once. Probably not. Yeah. And then Austin hits the ring. He stuns Rock just as the show went off the air. So this was obviously the change that led to Rock and Austin for the title at Mania. Mm -hmm. When this show first started, like I'm looking at the timer, and this is supposed to be a two-hour show. It's an hour and 38 minutes. I'm like, what the fuck? So it turns out it was that long because of extra attitude. That's mm -hmm. right. How many times have I skipped extra attitude? All of them, as far as I know. Well, after the first one, I skipped every one. Because mm. I was like, this is a complete waste of my time. You didn't this time, right? Hell no, are you kidding me? Good. Extra attitude had The Rock, yes. Steve Austin, and Mankind. Yes. The only thing missing was Vince McMahon. Pretty much. And all it was was 10 minutes of Austin drinking. Rock slowly recovers. He goes and gets some beers. Mankind recovers. They do the three-way toast. They all drink the beers. Rock, of course, is a fucking idiot. So he tries, and a dick. He tries to attack Steve Austin after promising that he wasn't going to do anything. He did cross his heart, yes. He tries to attack Steve Austin. Steve Austin gives him a stunner, okay? Now, Rock and Austin ended up... They had a bet. It was like... Austin would buy him... I can't remember what it was. It was something involving beer. Like, Austin would get him beers depending on how big a bump he took for the stunner or something like that. Like, the bigger the bump, the more beer or something. I can't remember what it was. But anyway, Rock's done some great sell jobs for that stunner. He fucking takes this stunner. And, like, he bumped and he spinned around three times with his arms like this. And he spun all the way around into a Socko Claw. Yeah. This was so awesome. Yes. This was so awesome. And they did this shit every single mm -hmm. night. Do you know what a great like network special they could make of just Steve Austin extra attitude, stunning guys drinking <laughs> beer and giving them stunners over and over again at the end of Raw? That was awesome. That was well worth it. Yeah. Oh, and then uh, also, Mankind left. Rock was trying to recover over on top of the announce desk, so Steve was a friend to give him another beer just so Rock could take a, sw a swig, and then Steve could punch him, and Rock could spray beer everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> the best. 
And you know what? This is just the beginning of them doing this because, you know, they're leading to the first WrestleMania match they have together. They got three more years of this. Oh, yeah. Like at the end of every single Raw. I'm going to watch it every week. Excellent. The best part of the show. Ah, Maestro. The finishes on this show were disqualification because two people in a tag match were fighting each other. Correct. Pinfall after distraction. Pinfall after belt shot. Pinfall after interference in a hardcore match. No finish in a trios match due to a kidnapping. Win in a ladder match after chokeslam by a giant guy. A world title change. Yeah. In a ladder match. There you go, everybody. That's Retro Raw Nitro. Retro Raw. Historic 300. Yeah, this was the 300th edition of Raw. Mm Mm-hmm. Also February 22nd, 1999. How times have changed from Raw 1142 or whatever we're at right now. Mm-hmm. Vincent Mann comes out for a promo and he's all fired up. Everyone with a screaming stomach needs to leave right now, he says, because tonight we're going to be roasting human flesh. <laughs> you know, I got to say about Vince McMahon. I mean, we've just started watching these like, you know, last few years or so. We've been watching all the recent stuff and everything like that. I have a theory that Raw has always been great when Vince is on it. <laughs> sure. But when he's not on it, it's not great. Mm. Right? He, he's, he's a great performer. I mean, all of that late 97 stuff has been awesome. He was so great in this segment here. He is such a promoter. He is a wrestling promoter. The one thing he does not want to be. Yes. He's the best at. <laughs> yes. He's out here making you, you're just so excited to see a fucking Inferno match. They're never any good. No. <laughs> They're just dumb. But he's out here, you're, it's not a comedy roast tonight. It's a human roast. Flesh. Yes. Leave this building if you do not like the smell of human flesh. There's one thing that Vince McMahon is not, and that is subtle. No. <laughs> Somebody's going to fry. Someone's going to fry. Undertaker had dared to threaten him last week, so he was booking Taker versus Kane in the Inferno match. And so he gets this point out, someone's going to fry, and he closes that chapter and moves on to his next topic. That's right, WrestleMania's coming, everybody. WrestleMania's coming up. The biggest WWF championship match of all time. He admits Steve Austin has earned a title shot against The Rock. And here is the referee for the Rock-Austin championship match, Paul White. It is so weird. After 19 years of hearing the big show, mm-hmm. this guy comes out on Raw and he's Paul White. They they try Paul White. They try the Big Nasty. Yeah. Thank God that one didn't last. And finally, eventually, they're going to get to the big show. But he's coming out here as Paul White with this bizarre music. It was all strange. What is this music? So, I don't know. He saunters down to the ring. Vince in the ring is just giddy looking at him, and I'm sure that was legit. Mm-hmm. He's so big. He's huge. He's a giant. They get in the ring, have a big hug. Fans are chaining giant sucks. White says, it's good doing business with Vince. The WWF will never be the same. I've already thrown Steve Austin through a cage. I've already... Uh, <laughs> he said, I gave Mankind the Big Nasty or showed him the Big Nasty or something. He was talking about the choke slam. That Great. sounds lewd. It does. He says, I put the title around Rock's waist. And stops and t- turns to Vince and says, I did that for you. But then Rock comes out. And now he's pissed. He wants to verify that this big jabroni claimed to have single-handedly put the title around his waist. He made his first heel turn. Or first turn. <laughs> he did. His first, he's been on Raw two minutes. So, Paul says this is what I said. Vince, in his mind, this is all just fun and games. He's laughing at all the dialogue. It, 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 clearly, two guys just fucking with each other. It's all a big joke. But then Rock wants to know who this Rudy, Rudy Poo is, thinking he can just walk on a Rock show and speak to him like that. And Paul calls Rock Pebble, threatens to shut his mouth. And interjected for a moment here. This fucking Michael Cole would not shut up. Yeah. Yeah. He's telling us this is bad. He's telling us The Rock means it. I'm like, how the fuck do you know The Rock means it, you idiot? And by the way, he didn't mean it. We found out later. So you're a fucking moron. And who was screaming in his ear to tell Lawler is telling him, just shut up and listen. Yeah. Lawler's telling him that. Because he won't just shut up and let them talk. Yeah. So Rock calls him a 500-pound bag of monkey crap. Now Vince is worried. 
Paul lifts Vince out of the way, sets him down. He and Rocco nose to nose. The whole place is just going insane. Because mm-hmm. they're going to get the giant versus the rock. Mankind comes out on stage, says Mr. Sokka would be a great referee. He is campaigning to be the second referee for the Mania main event. And he says Rock should face uh, Paul for the title tonight. He'll be the ref. And Vince tries to shut all this down, but White's like, wait a minute. I want to know if Rock will accept this challenge. And Rock did accept the challenge. He stormed off. This segment was awesome. And I watched this, and all I could think was, how did Big Show not end up on the same level as Rock and Austin? Because he was great here. Well, you'll soon find out. Yes. I do recall, when I thought about it, what happened in like three years, but yes. Dude, in two weeks, he does a clean job for Steve Austin. Well, that, the didn't, ring. that didn't help. Now, I want to I wanna say one criticism I have of this segment right here. Shouldn't Foley, like, won a rematch for the WWF Championship that he lost last week? Yes, he should. As soon as he lost that ladder match, unfairly, I might, might add. Yeah. Even as far as extra attitude, he's just like, well, I'm a former champ, I want a beer. He just <laughs> moved on. I'm perfectly happy now being a referee. Yes. That, that is, didn't sit well with me. That is weird. Yeah. Maybe he decided that being in the main event doing ladder matches and hardcore matches every week sucks. Maybe he felt, you know, I got more than I deserved. So I'll just step aside for these other deserving men sure. here in this company. Corporation was having a shouting match backstage all about Rock and Paul White. Brood versus Public Enemy. <laughs> what? Yes. Where in the fuck did they come from? ECW. They come down the ramp and I'm like, is that the Dudleys? And I'm like, that's Public Enemy. Yes. They were in WWE? Oh, yeah. yeah. Whoosh. They had a cup Dude. of coffee there. So fucking over my head. You don't remember the Acolytes in Public Enemy? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I got some things like, you know, there's there's like when when Bradshaw destroyed the Blue Meanie, the one night yes. only show. Mm-hmm. So like some of this stuff gets conflated. Like, was sure. this like a one time thing where they were in or was were they actually there? there anyway, for a little bit. Cole. Six months, maybe. Fucking Michael Cole again. They come out and he says, you know, they call themselves the kings of hardcore team wrestling. <laughs> he is shit. Facts. He's the worst. He is actual shit. <laughs> the absolute worst <laughs> commentator. And then, hey, this is the debut. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You're this right. is the debut of the public enemy. Mm-hmm. They're facing the fucking brood. Three geeks in the ministry. Disqualification. In a minute. Christian runs in for the DQ. They go a minute. And then, on top of that, the brood gives him a bloodbath afterwards. Yeah. Is that the worst debut we've seen in the there. entire Attitude Era so <laughs> far? I am Jesus at Christ. Least, at least technically they won. Sure. Sure. The winner's share of the purse. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing I can add is before the match, they had a sponsor thing from uh, Crispy M&M's. Those are 20 years oh, old. Oh, man. I thought this was like brand new. That made me feel old. You are old. I am old. During the break, the Undertaker ordered the Ministry to beat up the Brood for losing to Public Enemy. Can't fault him for that one. Billy Gunn versus Ken Shamrock with Val Venus on commentary. God, Val Venus and Jerry Lawler. Yeah. <laughs> they should be like the Raw announced team today, except you couldn't do this in no. 2018. No. They were in their element. It, it was a contest. Yeah. Who could get the filthiest comment on TV? Mm-hmm. See, this is one of those things where, like, nowadays, everybody kind of is given a character, and all of their dialogue is written for them. And they go out there, and they recite their deal, and they do their matches and whatever. Val Venus was his character. Sure. You put this fucking guy on commentary, he was like, Lawler! He had nine million jokes in this match, and they just he kept rattling him off, rattling him off. Him and Lawler are howling yeah. at their own comedy. It was awesome. My favorite was when I'm not even sure who which one of them said it, but they noted Val's been saying suck it long before DX was a thing. Mm-hmm. So Ken is beating Billy up. In the middle of like forty punches, he just stops to turn and yell at Val. Billy grabs him, hits a fame master. Jerry Lawler actually apologizes to Val because Michael Cole is calling the match and not talking about sex. Mm -hmm. All he thinks about is wrestling, Jerry Lawler says. (laughs) So Val just gets up and starts fighting with the guys, and the bell never rings. It's just a non-finish due to three guys fighting. If all Michael Cole thinks about is wrestling, like... (laughs) What? Yeah, this is that means it's the best we can get out of him. (laughs) Dude. (laughs) At least tell me he thinks about other things. 
So Ryan Shamrock is out there, and Ken yells at her and drags her away, and that was it. Vince is shown pleading with The Rock to call off the title match. There was a car horn honking in the background, which is like three times I muted my TV to make sure it wasn't in my neighborhood. It was actually on this show. I don't know what's going on. Kevin Kelly interviewed Sable. Did we not see this exact same segment? Was this a replay? It's very close to it. Last week. Last week, Sable calls his doctor into the ring. She browbeats her, and then she has her taken away. Mm Mm-hmm. This fucking woman shows up the next week. Yes. And they did the exact same thing. That's again. where you're wrong because Luna was here. Well, well also, she got a name. That's she's, true. she's Tori now. She is Tori. Fine. So, what a coincidence. That's uh, Yeah. Uh, Luna does come out. So, she comes out. She's got like blue jeans and a shirt on. She's looking very plain. As, as plain as Luna Vashon could possibly plain? look. As plain as Luna Vashon could possibly look. He's not wrong. So she I starts, guess. she goes off and she says, Sable, you have to understand, we can't all be as beautiful as you, but we don't use people and you're only the champion because of your looks. And I kept waiting for the moment, like for, for the for the turn on this, where she'd be sarcastic and just whip Sable's ass. No, Luna's character here <laughs> was having a crisis of self-confidence. Mm-hmm. She felt ugly. She went to the pretty girl and asked, please have pity on me. Vinny, you're missing a giant... I feel like I am. Okay. <laughs> please inform me. What happened was, Sable calls Tori into the ring. Right. Right? hmm She belittles her for being ugly or whatever. Crazy, whatever. She's, yeah. she's a wannabe. She's crazy. She's just another girl wanting to live her life through Sable. Luna is with the oddities. Yes. So she was coming out to defend this poor girl who had been called an ugly freak by Sable. Fine. That's fine, but Sable was in the oddities as well. Forget that, Craig. Okay. That's what's going on here. Okay. Luna was just sticking up for another unfortunate. Well, she did a horrible job. <laughs> well. <laughs> she went That's to the bully. That's another point. <laughs> she went to the bully and said, please stop being a bully, and the bully said no. Well, yeah. So. We don't always solve problems with violence, Vinny. At this point... Luna and Tori turn to leave. They <laughs> yeah. hang their heads in shame yes. and go to walk away. I guess they go off to be ugly together. <laughs> and Sable won't have this. She drops them both with belt shots and lays them out and she leaves. Luna and Tori here were the geeks of the week of all time. <laughs> no. It's pretty bad. No, Vinny. Especially but they were they were somewhat geeky. Especially some of you say. So listen. These belt shots was listen, the geekiest thing they did. I'm not yeah. going to defend this even though I, I, <laughs> even though it sounds like I'm defending this, I'm not gonna, okay? But listen. Ah, fuck it. <laughs> so Sucks. Sable hits Luna with a belt. Yes. Luna goes down. Sable of I mean, time is going to pass before she can get the second belt shot off. Say, Tori has to just stand there and kind of go, yes, it was no good, Vinny. Oh, no. <laughs> it sucked, okay? And then the belt came and got her, too. But you know what? Here, I will say this. Sable's trying to be a heel. She's still wildly cheered. Look she says, her. I'm not doing this for you women. I'm doing this for the guys. They go nuts for her. Yeah, imagine that. Maybe their idea was, if Luna comes out and defends Tori and attacks Sable... Everyone is going to boo Luna, and they're going to boo this girl, and they're going to cheer. So maybe we'll just do a deal where they turn their back, and Sable jumps them from behind, and the fans will figure out she's a heel now. Maybe that's what they figured. It didn't work. Oh. The segment sucked. I'm just saying, maybe that's what happened here. Vince begged Paul White, please don't go through this match tonight. You'll get your time, he says. You'll be champion someday, just not right now. D'Lo Brown comes and out And Big for Show promo. noted, hey, listen. The belt's going to be in the corporation one way or the other. So what's the big problem, buddy? Yeah. Good argument, show. So D'Lo comes out for a promo. Jeff Jarrett, no one heart of taking out Mark Henry, and then Deborah took out Ivory, so he's alone. He wants to fight Jeff Jarrett, no one heart by himself, and they oblige. What an idiot. <laughs> and D'Lo versus Jarrett and Hart in a handicap match. A very fun match for the three minutes they had. D'Lo's making his comeback when Deborah takes the ref. PMS comes out. Jacqueline just destroys D'Lo with a drop kick to the back of the head. Gosh. And Owen hits a spin kick to finish him off. And then Hart and Jarrett continue the assault afterwards, and that was They it. gave him a double stroke afterwards. That is actually what happened. They stroked him. That's a fact. Wow. A double stroke. Yeah. Mankind is backstage painting stripes on his shirt, 
and practicing giving instructions to wrestlers. So it's time for The Rock versus Paul White. Mankind comes out to be the ref. Vince comes out, he's all smiles. He announces this match is not going to happen. But then Rock comes out and says, Vince, get yourself over to the two jabronis at the commentary desk. It's time for me to fight, or whatever. So it's Rock versus Paul White. They get in the ring, and suddenly Vince is on commentary, and he goes from being distressed and upset about all this to suddenly being very eager to see what's going to happen. Man, the, the, the bell ringer rang the bell before they were ready. <laughs> so then Mankind calls for the bell, and he doesn't want to ring it again. It's like, I've already run it. And Vince has to yell, ring the damn bell! And the bell rings, and Rock and Big Show stare each other down. Rock gives him a little push. Can you imagine, like, if you're the guy whose job is to ring the bell. <laughs> you travel the country with Monday Night Raw. You go around the world, and all you do is ring the damn bell, Okay. You are a goddamn serious bell ringer. This bell rings at the beginning, and it rings at the end. Mm-hmm. Okay? I'm not even belittling the guy. I'm saying, that's your fucking job. You ring the bell at the beginning, you ring the bell at the end. Well, he rings the bell at the beginning, and Foley says, ring the bell. Y- you can't. Done already did my job. That ends the match. So really, it was his fault for ringing it early in the first place. It is. Yeah. And then Vince is yelling at you, you must ring this bell again. This fucking guy's going crazy. I'm ending the match right here. And then at the end, I got to ring the fucking bell again. I'm restarting the match. Can you imagine? The power this man welds. Wow. Oh, I'm just thinking about his mental state. <laughs> so Rock shoves Big Show. Big Show shoves him down by the face. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as Rock is down, Big Show drops Mankind with a super kick. And they go over there, they put the boost to him. Vince pops up to his feet, the greatest cackle of his life. The rib they pulled on Mankind, setting him up with this beating. And they destroy Mankind, and they hold him so Vince can hit him. And they're all having a great time. So yes, in storyline, Paul White, on his first match in the company, did turn down a title shot to sucker punch the ref, sucker kick the ref. Not only that, but like I mentioned earlier, this fucking idiot Mick Foley, not only does he not care about getting a rematch for the WWF Championship, he was more eager to be a referee in this match, and he was made to look like an absolute idiot. That's how it went down. Actually, the way he looked like an idiot was, was tucking in this referee shirt into his black sweatpants. Not a good look. It's Mick Foley. (laughs) It... (laughs) What's his last good look? <laughs> Has he ever had a good look? I mean that the uh, nicest way off, possible. He pulled off Santa Claus pretty well. There you go. Okay. All that right. was decades later. <laughs> Again. <laughs> it took him a while. <laughs> so they're going up the ramp, and they're still all happy. Ha ha, we fooled that mankind, made him look like an asshole. And then just as they get to the top of the stage, just the camera that's in their face, and only that microphone picks this up. And Rock says, Hey, what was up with that shoving me in the face? And Show looks at him, and he looks straight ahead and just blows him off and says, don't worry about it. Planting the seeds. Foreshadowing. Just planting the seeds. Turn's coming. There might be a big show turn in the future. Number two. <laughs> God, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the corporation's cele- celebrating again backstage, and Rock says, let's, let's go eat. Everything's on the rock. Made me laugh. Draws versus Steve Blackman. Mm. So I don't mean... To be morbid, sure, or creepy, but we're watching these shows, knowing that Owen Hart's got a few months to live, and Darren draws us paralyzed by the end of the year. It sucks sometimes watching 1999 Raw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't stuff for two minutes. Blackman hit a bicycle kick out of nowhere and pinned him for a clean victory. <laughs> they just they had a nothing match, <laughs> and there was a clean pin. I was I was flabbergasted, and then of course. Draws beats up Steve Blackman. From his own of sticks. God damn. We gotta have the babyface win to start this feud. Did Michael Cole call these nunchucks? He's an idiot. He may have. I'm pretty sure he did. Vince gives Kane a pep talk backstage. He wants Kane to promise that Taker will burn in hell. I'm not sure Kane can actually make that promise. But he nodded. Undertaker did a spooky promo backstage. He's bathed in blue light. There's scary music playing. He says, I have agents of darkness all over the world, and they're all going to do terrible things in the name of my master. And I had a flashback to Lucha Underground. I thought, Vampiro? 
Sadly, no. I wish. <laughs> Sadly, no. He says he is McMahon's worst nightmare. He has a surprise for McMahon tonight, and the WWF would be his. Skull does Val Venus match. If you don't remember what's going on in this fucking stupid feud, I don't blame you. I don't have any idea. Well, Blue Meanie has been Blue Dust. Mm -hmm. Blue Meanie has been harassing Gold Dust for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and, and weeks. And why? Who the fuck knows? Exactly. But the point is, they had a match, I guess, at the pay-per-view, and Gold Dust won. And now they are doing this Gold Dust Val Venus match, and the Blue Meanie comes out, DDTs Val Venus, and helps Gold Dust win. Yep. I don't know. None of it makes a lick of sense. I hate these swerves. It's so dumb. By the way, Val Venus takes a heck of a DDT. Val's DDT bump was the best. Yeah. As he spikes his head in the floor, shoots his leg straight up in the air, and then quivers them. Then collapses. Uh, let's see. What else here? Ladies definitely loved Val tonight, even, even more than usual. But mostly I, my takeaway is I... It's been like a month now, maybe more... I still can't believe Blue Meanie in WWF was a thing that actually happened. Mm -hmm. China and Shane had a pep talk backstage. A pep talk backstage. Easy for you to say. Did I say step talk? Yeah, really. Yeah. Pep stock, you said. Pep stock. Yeah. Hardcore Holly versus Bart Gunn. Anyone else miss Road Dog immediately? Yeah. This sucked. I mean, it was okay. They hit each other with bananas. And a watermelon. Forget the bananas. The banana crate. I have no idea why there was fruit everywhere. Like, what's this, going on here? This was nothing but two guys taking turns hitting each other with weapons. Road Dog would come out here. He'd do hardcore matches. And there'd be tons of weapon spots and crowd brawling and all that. But there would be a match involved. There would be yes. high points and low points and turns and intrigue and drama. Yes. This was just two dumbasses hitting each other with shit. This was jackass for 10 minutes. And then some... Oh, God, I forgot about it. Random <laughs> mask guy... Runs out on the ramp, which, by the way, you know what the ramp is? It's that yeah. thing that, you know, is sloped gently down to the ring. Sure. Michael Cole claims it's 15 feet off the floor. Yeah. Okay, we just watched a scaffold match, so That's I know legit. what 15 yeah. feet is. This wasn't fuck. Anyway, the point is, he's an idiot. But <laughs> some random guy runs out, and he's doing, like, karate. Yeah. And he throws Bart off the ramp. Bob Holly gets the pin. You know who this was? I thought to myself, who the fuck is this guy? Mm -hmm. Is it Quang? No. Who is this doing martial arts? He's twi twisting his arms around. He Dr does like a chop. Drink a kata. I'm like, who in he the did a chop? fuck? He, he was chopping this guy. <laughs> it's like, who is this? It's fucking Dr. Death yes. Steve Williams. This guy, the scariest man in the world, needs a gimmick. He came back. As a karate guy. Yeah. Did you mention his wacky mask? A couple times. I don't even know what, how to describe this. They said we're going to take the scariest Why did guy he come back as a karate guy? I don't this know. This is more important than his mask. It's part of it. Why did he come back in a, as a karate guy in a mask? These are all legit questions. This was the most intriguing thing on this entire <laughs> show. I, I'm just telling you right now. I don't now. know whose idea this was. So this show... He's like superstar Billy Graham now. He's coming back That's as a true. ninja. Okay. That's true. Okay. Well, there you go. That's their idea. So they showed a replay of Karate Steve throwing Bart gun off the stage. He just grabs him by the head, and they walk over <laughs> the side of the stage, and Bart jumps. It's so awful. And then Bob. Bob well, did you see the karate? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm presuming it was karate. I don't know what he was doing. So Bob comes over to get the pin. It's been a hardcore match. They've hit each other with glass and wood and steel and fruit for 10 minutes. And, and he, flour. And, and a big bag, bag of flour, flour. Covered flour. And he lays across Bart and he counts his finger all triumphantly and he pops up celebrating like nothing's happened. He was no selling this beating from start to finish. This sucked so bad. <laughs> Were they in a bakery? I'm getting more angry about this now. Like, <laughs> you, you could not have designed a segment to be worse. Maybe the catering table well, was Well, right Nitro on did it on a weekly basis, but... Okay, this is better than anything on Nitro last week, but... <laughs> <laughs> it sucked so bad. China versus X-Pac. The match is one minute of X-Pac chasing Shane around ringside. <laughs> the ref... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you've already devoted too much time to this. No. Yes. Shane and X-Pac are playing tag, running around the yes. ring. Okay? <laughs> yes, they were. Dude. Serious question. If you're the referee, 
can you just stand in the middle of the ring and watch them run around the ring? Yes. This referee gets out of the ring. Now he's chasing them. Yes. He gave chase. I didn't know who was it. They're fucking running ring. They're running around the ring. This ref does not see a 200 and probably at this point now 50 pound Triple H get in the ring and give China pedigree. No. And you know the funniest thing about it? Hunter grabs China, hooks her arms, but then looks to make sure the, run- the referee is running around like a dumbass. Mm-hmm. Then he hit the move. The only thing that was missing. Bases. The only thing that was missing from this was the Benny Hill theme playing in the background. <laughs> Yakety Sax. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad you know the name. It's important. It's amazing. I've used it a lot in my life. Apparently. So yeah, X Pac. X Pac. So China's laid out. Shane runs through the ring to flee X Pac. X Pac is chasing him, but he sees China laid out, throws in the brakes, and pins her. <laughs> so this, by the way, the, the result, the 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 payoff to all of this is. Because of this win over China, X Pac gets a European title match against Shane at WrestleMania. Thank God. <laughs> Shane McMahon and a prestigious European championship title. at WrestleMania already. Ay, ay, ay. Vince comes out for a promo on Taker. He's- Have we mentioned, by the way, that the end of last week's show was a document? Yes. Was given by the Undertaker mm-hmm. to give to Vince McMahon. Taker gave it to Shane. That's what this is all about. Yes. Mm-hmm. Vince cannot believe what Undertaker is threatening him. So with. He's, he's upset Taker's threatening him. He's waving the letter around. He's very pissed off that Taker has made this personal. He's gone outside the WWF arena, he says. Mm. So it's Kane versus Taker in an Inferno match. He makes sure to add that Undertaker burned down his house and killed his parents. Yes. And now tonight yeah. he will burn. Yeah. Flesh. There are certain words. <laughs> Vince Flesh, loves. ass, and fired. <laughs> so, they're doing the match. Vince is just irate on commentary about how this is all so personal. And then Paul Bearer appears. He presents Vince with a black hat box. Vince refuses to open it. And by the way, I just want to mention, it's an Inferno match. Mm-hmm. And so they've they've got, like, a thing around the ring. Trough of fire. A sure. trough of fire. Mm-hmm. And so, like, every time someone takes a bump, they blow the fire up high. Yeah. Do you remember it's the first so one? It's so goofy. Do you it remember is. the first one? It was oh, yeah. Even, it was even worse. Yeah. Every punch that was thrown, it's there was a burst of flame. Just preposterous. So finally, Vince opens the box, and there's a teddy bear inside. And Vince's mood immediately changes. He Shocked and disgusted. He dumps off the headphones, and he stands up, and he grabs the teddy bear. He sulks over to the ramp. His back is to the ring as the Inferno match is going on. Just asking Paul why they were doing this. So the match is still going on behind him. Taker gets thrown out of the ring. I'll remind you. I did rewind this. <laughs> I've heard it like four times. There is a trough of fire just outside the apron. So Taker had to go flying not just over the top rope, over the fire, so he didn't land on it and burn to death. He did like this gymnastics vault. Yes. It was spectacular. Yeah, it was like, oh my God. This it was, was like, like, a, like any dive he's ever done, except yeah. there was no one there to catch him. Yeah. So he was flying over the fire. That was very ballsy. It, it was pretty crazy. For for this, by the way. Yes. Yes. It's not like a WrestleMania moment. So Kane does the flying clothesline spot to the floor, but hits the announce desk. And they're brawling out there. And actually, they did the same finish here with uh, Van Hammer and Bam Bam Bigelow. This fucking finish. Sure. <laughs> the only thing that was missing was Bummer. Kane threw a, f- and, threw a foot, uh, threw a boot. Fire. Kane threw a boot. Taylor caught it, put it in the fire. Kane said Bummer. <laughs> By the way, can we recap that spot that ended this Inferno match? Kane tried to kick the Undertaker. Mm-hmm. Undertaker grabbed his foot yes. and put it in the fire. Yeah. yeah. Why didn't you put Kane in the fire? Says, like a well, hundred times. Part Is it, it that easy? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you suddenly realize, I can put this foot in the fire. I'll win! So Kane's on the foot, on the ground, batting away at his foot. And on his foot. And on his foot. On the ground. And they did not turn the fire extinguishers on him until they cut away. So in storyline, he's still burning as we speak. And then Taker walks over. He's won the match, obviously. And he goes to menace Vince. Vince is now reduced to sobbing on his knees, asking why. Why? And Taker takes the teddy bear, and he lights it on fire and throws up the ramp. Listen, as hokey and stupid as all of this is, there's something new going on. Well, there's definitely okay. something new going on. We have seen Vince and Austin for a year now. It's run its course. They had the finish. Vince needs something new to do. So now Vince is feuding with The Undertaker over a flaming teddy bear. Fine. 
I'll remember you said that, Vinny. <laughs> I will remember you said that when we get the payoff. Well, to this higher oh, power. Oh, angle. I recall the payoff. Oh, I my recall Lord. the payoff. A visual of Vince McMahon sobbing and laying on the ground and yelling, "No!" And the teddy bear on fire. This looked hokey. It is hokey, Craig. Yeah, this is hokey. Yeah, cornball. This is supposed Silly. to be a sport. Yeah. <laughs> For that, this is supposed to be people. <laughs> yes, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yes. But you know what? I loved both of these shows. Sure. Now that I've recapped them, two great shows here tonight. 19 years ago this week. Well, Would you like your music, Vinny? I would. And I'm happy to say this report will be much more intriguing than the one on Nitro. The finishes on this show were... DQ due to run-in in one minute for a team making its debut... Non-finish, when a commentator joined the action and the match just stopped. Pinfall after interference and a handicap match. Non-finish in a championship match, when the challenger laid out the ref. A clean pin. A pin after interference from Raven's Flunky's Flunky. Pin after interference in a hardcore match. Pin after interference in a match where there was all one guy chasing another. And then a clean finish in an Inferno match. Hey, there you go. That was a clean finish in the main event. In the main event, that's true. Wow. He cleanly set his brother on fire. Yep. 